skeleton. Not privets, thankfully. I hope this poor soul didn't die alone. Oh, it's much darker and damper than I expected. Not sure I'd choose such a place to live, but who am I to judge? The Hadalit culture probably has different values. Somewhere in here is my privet. Let's look around. Oh no, Privet! Wait, these aren't sheep bones. Maybe a horse? Oh, poor thing. Privet Sash. I gave this to her as a present. <laughs> Finding Privet Sash worries me. She'd never take that off. Unless she left it as a clue. She wants me to know she's here. The bones we found looked gnawed on, but none of them were sheep bones. So I feel confident Privet's still alive. What a horrible notion. You don't think they plan to eat poor Privet? How could anyone look into those sweet eyes and consider such a deed? Privet isn't food. She's a friend. But I must agree. Very nasty behavior from my new neighbors. We know Privet came through here because we found her sash. 
But since we didn't see any sheep bones, they must have moved her. Let's search the caves over to the west. I know it's rude to rummage around someone's home, but they started it. From the archipelago to the mainland, everything is war and fighting. But it doesn't have to be that way. I try to assume people have good intentions, and usually they do. Maybe this is all a misunderstanding. I can work that out later. Trail of bones. Oh, still not privets. A good sign. Look at that natural bridge ahead. I bet the view is delightful. Privet! Reunited at last! A cave exit is nearby. Come, Privet. Let's get out of here. <laughs> oh, my dear Privet. I don't know how I could live without you. I must say, and I don't usually speak ill of anyone except goats, but those Hadalids were awful. Didn't even bother to explain themselves. I'm thankful you came along to help. And Privet tells me she appreciates you as well. No, thankfully. Her wool is damp and dirty, which I find offensive, but she's safe. I'll clean her right up in no time. Please, take this as a thank you from the both of us. I'm glad that not everyone is as rude as those Hadalids. High Isle feels so peaceful most of the time. That's why I like it here, a respite from all the chaos of the mainland. But recently there are Hadalids and rogue knights roaming the roads. And adventurers like you. Too much excitement for me. First thing, Privet needs a bath. She seems a little sad at the moment, but a long soak should fix that. Then I'll make us a meal. Ah, the simple pleasures. I just want her to feel safe again. You were quite stern with them. Maybe the Hadalids caught the message not to bother their neighbors. If I see them lurking around again, I will just tell them they're not welcome. I can be quite stern as well when I need to be. They fell for her charms, obviously. Who wouldn't want my sweet privet living with them? She brightens every room. Even a moldy cave. Maybe those Hadalids never intended to eat her. Yes, that must be it. She was never in danger. First thing, Privet needs a bath.
you return alone. I take it the news is not good. Grenier and Denise were not just retainers. They were friends. The steadfast shall miss them, and so shall I. Please, tell me what happened. Grenier and Denise were helping arrange a banquet at Castle Navier. Then they were to collect the supplies and return here. What could they have seen that would cost them their lives? The banquet is the Ascendant Order. Plundering steadfast supplies and killing our retainers. Damn. It was brave of Grenier to try to fight back, but foolish. The supplies weren't worth their lives. So Lady Arabelle informed me. I hesitate to accuse anyone, but perhaps you should join me at Castle Navire. All the nobles of High Isle will be there, and if my retainers did see something at the castle, perhaps you can determine what that was. Duchess Elea of House Dufort is hosting the banquet. She's decided to go ahead and throw the party, even though our guests of honor are still missing. Go to Castle Navire's courtyard. Introduce yourself when you arrive. Be discreet, please. Duchess Elea wants to project confidence, especially in light of the current situation. Rumors travel swiftly in the archipelago. The people need to believe we have things under control. I expected to pay a ransom and have the delegates back by now. Ridiculous. No one opposes peace. It's just that some of the nobles questioned if this were the right time and place. A Duchess Elea, for example, didn't want to bring the mainland's troubles to High Isle. Not without hope our efforts would bear fruit. Count Leonard of House Mornard enjoys brisk profits by supplying all sides in the war. He doesn't want that to end too abruptly, especially not in a way that makes Elea and House Dufort look good. He detests that she decided to host the talks. Rivals and partners... House Monard built its wealth on trade. They rely on House Dufort ships to carry their goods. But the two families have long vied with each other for primacy. The Monards resent the fact that the Duforts rule High Isle. My family has always believed that wealth is meant to foster good works. When the three alliances went to war, I made the decision to do whatever I could to help common folk caught in their violent wake. So I started the Society of the Steadfast. We're not a religious organization per se, but we do take inspiration from the teachings of Stendar. We establish healing centers and other works to show compassion and mercy to those touched by this terrible war. Soldiers and commoners both. We're a small society that mostly works near the battlefields of Cyrodiil. Duchess Elea wants to project confidence. It's a shame the Ascendant Order got to Lord Bacaro's retainers before you could. What could they have seen that warranted their deaths? Perhaps we'll learn more at Castle Navir, although I'm certainly not in the mood for a party. And our missing guests of honor will no doubt be the main topic of discussion. This is a chance to listen, as well as ask questions. Make sure you speak to Elea Dufort, Demar Dufort and John Menard. They'll be the most important nobles present. Until we know more, I suspect everybody. But if any of the nobles are funding the Ascendant Order, I think it likely that it's one of the grand families of High Isle. That means House Dufort or House Menard. Either way, we'll know more soon. Alea is the Duchess of House Dufort and nominal ruler of High Isle. Demard is her brother and a count. John Menard is the highest ranking noble of House Menard, currently on High Isle. He's Count Leonard's cousin, representing House interests here.
Just one more match. Give me a chance to... Heard all that, eh? Guifa's a palms up card sharp. One of the best tribute players in town. But like I always say, if you want to take the measure of a grot, you've got to climb. That nose ring jibe was unnecessary, right? I'll get her. Sorin, right? She definitely has an eye for talent. Yes, I can tell you all about tribute. It's a card game. A scavenger hunt. Ah, Razamad's the game baron here in Gonfalon Bay. <laughs> the better qu- Oh, Guifa. Usually, no. <laughs> the better question would be, what made you- Greetings, my. Then you first make your way. 
<sighs> Brother. Yeah, yeah. Ha-ha! If it isn't my new... Oh, oh did he? Right. The essence of the game is to buy cards to add to your play deck. Each of us will use our play deck to score prestige, until one of us gets enough prestige to win. Lots of cards, eh? The ones on your side of the table are yours. The ones on my side are mine. The cards in the middle are what we call the tavern. We each claim cards from the tavern to improve our play decks and earn enough prestige to win. You'll take the first turn. Let's both draw our starting hand. Each of your cards have a coin value, see? You can use their coin value to buy cards into your play deck from the tavern, the center of the table. Try to keep track of the value of the cards in your hand. Each card has a cost, a suit, and an effect. If I were you, well, this card here seems like the right one for you to buy with the coin that you have, so claim it. When you buy a card, you subtract its cost from your coin total, and you get the card. Then a new card replaces that card in the tavern. You still have enough coin to buy another card, so let's do that. Now, you can't play a card you bought right away. When you buy a card, it goes into a cooldown pile here, see? You can see at a glance what card suits are in your cooldown pile. It looks like you don't have enough coin to buy any other cards, and there's nothing else you can do at the moment. When that happens, you signal that your turn is over. Any resources you have at the end of your turn will be cleared once your turn is over. Except prestige, that is. Once your turn ends, you discard your cards and draw five new ones. You can start to plan your next turn while I take mine. That said, you should always keep an eye on what your opponent is up to on their turn. They might buy a card or take an action that will force you to revise your plans. So now, it's my turn. I'll control the table until I signal the end of my turn. See if you can figure out my strategy based on my actions. Well, well. The cards you drew gave you both gold and power. Power has two uses. The first is combat, but it also turns into prestige at the end of your turn. Remember, earning prestige is how you win. Remember when I told you that your currencies get cleared when you end your turn? Well, power doesn't carry over between turns. But when you do signal the end of your turn, any power you have left over turns into prestige. Good to know, eh? See, these little fellows, they're our patrons. Each deck comes with its own patron, and they play an important role in how the deck works. See? Each patron has something they want. A price, let's call it. They also have something to offer. A reward. Pay a patron's price, and you'll get their reward. You have to pay the price all at once, and you usually get the reward immediately. Try paying one of these patrons. Whichever one you choose to pay will offer you a boon. Just keep in mind, you're only allowed to pay one patron per turn. They can get a little jealous. The patron you just paid, notice anything different about them? They favor you now. All patrons start in a neutral bent, and then show favor to whoever pays them first. Of course, you can pay a patron that favors your opponent. If you do, that patron will become neutral. Pay them again on a later turn, and then they'll favor you. And here's a tip. If you ever can get all patrons on the table to favor you, you'll win the game. Even if you have less prestige than your opponent, just one more thing to keep an eye on. All right, 
you need to draw new cards, but your deck is empty. Now we shuffle your cooldown pile, and that becomes your new draw pile. You might draw cards you bought last turn, as well as those you started with. Your cooldown pile is empty. That means all the cards you started with or bought during play are now in your draw pile. Right, it's my turn again. I'm going to draw some coin, use it to buy a card, and draw some power from my play deck, which will become prestige when my turn ends. Just like your turn, only, um, more experienced. Those cards you drew can trigger a combo. See how they have extra effects if you draw another card that matches their suit? Luckily, you bought cards with the suit you need to trigger these combos. Some of the most powerful effects on cards come from combos, and a card will tell you how much of each suit you need to activate its combo effect. Great players always try to trigger combos, so keep track of those suits. We're closing in on the end. I can tell by keeping track of the prestige we've earned. For this practice match, we're keeping the total small, but in a real game, you'll need more prestige to win. Ah, a grand victory! Well, maybe a little too grand. Go talk to Master Razamad and tell him. You return? Oh, come. Then it is my. You joined the Royster's Club at an opportune time. Smaller. Remember, I would be happy to. Those days are behind me. Yeah, of course. Just trying to help out my friends. No worries, all right? Hey, it's our newest recruit. Yeah, of course. Just challenge. Remember, you saw. <laughs> First...
I hope to be done here soon. That's bad luck, that is. A day of hard work. Stranger, those stockade ruffians hauled away my husband. Can you help me? You, you're actually stopping to help? Everyone else into their damn prison stockade. And it won't be long before they finish processing him. Then they'll... On the prison island of Aminos? Hardly. Besides, there's no time. Here, take... Here, I'll mark a location on your map. There's a spot out in the jungle where we can meet. I'll... I do my research. Everyone in town says Jailer Omda loves wine. They also say he's willing to look the other way in exchange for a free bottle every now and again. He guards the back way into the stockade, which is perfect for your purpose. Nothing illegal, if that's what you're asking. Well, nothing overtly illegal. We were watching... Look, I may have exaggerated my distress when we met, but everything I told you is true. They grabbed Valentine... They do something when they process the prisoners. Magic... Look, Valentine and I are thieves, and we're damn good ones. Getting into and out of impossible situations is what we do. It's simple. You find my husband before they process him, escort him to the location I marked on your map, and we all get away before the... this they do. Unless you want to become a permanent resident of the prison stockade, just move along, citizen. I'm tired. I'm... Have you lost your senses? Why in the name of Rupka's starry britches do you want to go inside? There's nothing but murderers, cut purses, and thieves in there. Is that... It is... A rare du Fort Red! My favorite! All right, take this outfit. Wear it. As for finding a thief... I'd check the head jailer's office in the keep if I were you. You want to put on that trusty outfit before you head inside. If you get caught, we never had this conversation. Depends on your intentions. If you just want to work, if you're planning a rescue. But I don't want to know nothing about that.
I'd rather not have to throw you into the stockade. You don't belong here, do you? You may be able to fool the less attentive jailers and inmates of this place. Valentine. Valentine. Oh. Uh. You may be able to fool the less attentive Valentine. Oh, nothing. Not just any prisoner. Yavara. That viper used something I found to earn her status as a trustee. I should be the one getting... Great. Listen carefully. Jailer Zalze keeps his footlock. You get something? Let me see.
Get away from my bedroll. How did you... You're not a prisoner. Get lost before I inform the... You don't look like a prisoner. You probably... Sh she said what now? Rotmeth. Hey, Yavara! Come and insult me to my face! I dare you! What are you talking about, you big oaf? You said I smell worse than a wood elf's Rotmeth. I said no such thing. But it's true. Your odor could knock out a mammoth! Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Let's see how you smell without a nose! You wanna fight, big boy? I'll give you a fight! Well, were you able to slip one of the Jailer's valuables into Yavara's bedroll? Excellent. My turn. I never renege on an agreement. Valentine arrived in the... That's what the Jailers call the area between their keep and the gates that lead into the jungle. Not the safest place to go wander... Valentine said he needed to check something past the big tree, near where the... Time for your belongings check, Yavara. Don't mind us. Hey, what's my lock doing in your bedroll? What? No! How That's it! Your status as a trustee is revoked, and you're going to process it. No! Not the jungle! I'm innocent! Move! This platform is for trustees, not the common rabble. You'll be on your way to the jungle before you know it. The legend was right. I do need three keys. Oh, hello. If you're one of those horrid prisoners come to rob me, I'm afraid my current situation has left me quite destitute. Marcel? Why would she do that? She knew my plan was to get arrested and steal the Daybreak gem. I let those jailers grab me on purpose. Well, at least it sounds like she has a better exit. From the prison? Whatever gave you that idea? No, I needed to get into the prison to the one where the Daybreak Gem is stored. Pay attention, my friend. I didn't think I was going too fast. The old vault was built... I hoped the legend was wrong that I'd only need the one key I already have. But alas, it required... Brilliant! According to the book, the keys were hidden... Se it's remarkable. The legend of the sisters... Gate lies the jungle of Amnos. Your home for the rest of your miserable life. This one knows lives. she can never leave the jungle. But sometimes, slipping through that gate is so tempting. Stay back! This one was just looking at the gate and regretting the choices that led her to this fate. This one cannot do that. This one was processed, so she cannot live anywhere but within this dung-infested jungle. You are prisoners and do not know this. Once you are banished to the jungle, leaving it will kill you dead, dead, dead. No, no lie. This one saw it with her own eyes. Poor Humdo did just that. Turned to dust before he had gotten more than a few steps through the gate. The jungle is bad, but turn into...
Look, up there. If I were a key, I'd hide up there. Must be the place. Look around for a key while I keep watch. Natural. One key down, one to go.
stone structure. The key must be in there. Oh, what does that plaque say? Hmm, plinths. Must be these low pedestals over here. There's a shawl on one already, so we just need to find a sacred leaf and the traitor's coal. What is she thinking? No one gets off this island. Did you see? Her partner, Anton, was selected for that, I guess. So, so many. Well, that's a leaf and a chunk of coal. Start with the leaf. Place it on the plinth closest to the center of the eye. other center. Try placing the leaf on the other plinth. That seems right. Now, place the coal. That's it. The door appears clear. Well done. Three keys. Let's return to the vault and see if we can open it.
this one knows she can never leave the jungle. But sometimes, slipping through that gate is so tempting. To this gate lies the jungle of Amos. Your home for the rest of your miserable lives. Please! I'm innocent, I tell you! Don't send me into the jungle! Too late for that. Are you a political prisoner, a war criminal, or a murderer? Right. Certain death out here. There's a slight chance to survive in the jungle. Let's insert our keys. Hopefully we don't have to turn them all at the same time. Amazing! Let's head inside. Come, friend! The treasure awaits! Put them to sleep and throw them in the cage. Remember the boss said not to hurt them. Wake up, my darling. And thanks for opening the vault. You always did have a way with locks and keys. Marcel? What are you doing in that cage? Poor Valentine. As confused as ever. You're in the cage, my dear. I'm stealing the treasure. You don't look as surprised as my darling husband. But I do want to thank you for helping him open this vault. You say lie, I say slight fabrication. Let's just agree. Share? <laughs> Real thieves don't share, my sweet. Everything we do is self- All right, my minions, gather up the treasure and let's get out of here. Isn't she a marvel? Well, we need our own escape route. Here, grab my hammer and chisel and find us a way out of here. Knock on the walls with the hammer and chisel and look for a weak spot. Volcanic tunnels riddle these islands. There's bound to be one nearby. That sounds promising. And that's why I carry a hammer and chisel. Now, let's get out of here. Now that we're free, we can finish what we started. You assume Marcel knows about the Daybreak Gem, but I never mentioned it when I told her the legend of the vault. I always hold back a secret or two. Marcel has no idea that the big, non-precious gem is really the- Ah, my trusty hammer and chisel. Saved my ass on more than one occasion. Our exit. I'll set up this ladder while you find the gem. Check the lockboxes that Marcel left behind. It has to be in one of them. Definitely the Daybreak Gem, my friend. Look how it refuses to glisten. We're out! Now, let's get to that extraction point Marcel told you about. at the extraction point, my friend. <laughs> climb, my friend, climb! We did it, my friend. Look, we beat my wife to the extraction point. Smashing! Valentine? How did you... You constantly underestimate me, oh love of my life. Here, let me just... 
Cut these ropes for you. Damn you, Valentine. Didn't think you had it in you. But I will see you soon, my love. Count on it. Always, my love. Always. Marcel is angry with me, but she'll get over it. These competitions keep our blood hot, if you catch my meaning. While she finds another way out of the jungle, we slip away on the next ship to Parting Amino Station. Now, ah, uh, and a beautiful specimen it is. Marcel never understands the importance of legends, and that's why we bested her this day. Anyway, I never would have succeeded without your assistance. Take this. One of these days, I'll figure out where I need to take the Daybreak Gem. Then the treasure of the Daybreak Monks will be mine. <laughs> Perhaps I'll reach out to you, my friend. You're quite... Oh, not a clue. I'm still in the information gathering stage of the heist. Legends require a lot of research and study to fully uncover. But one day, I will need to hide the gem, though. I don't want Marcel to get too curious. You think so? I suppose. We do have a healthy competitive... Well, first I need to get off this damn island, then that research... I Most certainly. Until next time, my friend. Are you a political prisoner, a war criminal? Through this gate or a lies the jungle of Amnus. Your home for the rest of your miserable lives. Please! I'm innocent, I tell you! Don't send me into the jungle! Yes, to the jungle! Too late for that. You've all been processed. 
If we don't banish you into the jungle, Processed you'll prisoners, die. I've seen all cut. An innocent orb. Back to the stockade, prisoner. It will be your turn for processing and banishment soon enough. This one knows she can never leave the jungle. But sometimes, slipping through that gate is so tempting. No one appreciates the forest on their own. I know these merchants. They'll take all they can.
You there! I'm begging you. There was a shipwreck. The others need help. I counted the footprints. North. House Mornard sprouted. back. You. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Why did they said that the archipelago belongs to nature? That they were caught wrestling? She was whole when I escaped. I offered to help the Elder Tide. Sacrifice. Right now. But they changed the coral into something. I passed by one of them. Anyone still alive will be in the cages above. Destroy the coral! Make those druids pay!
Over here, quickly. I don't know when they'll be back. Thank the eight you're not one of those druids. Sergeant Brusick survived the wreck. The sea That would be Kyrisnia. It's my job. No hope. Either pick yourselves off the ground or let me carry you. We're getting out of here. Sergeant Brusick's waiting. Veslin told me what happened. Is it true that a few of those druids were enough to cause our shipwreck? All those... Oh, it does my aches good to hear that. <laughs> How's Mornard? Well, you were helping my... Like I said, what happened here was... She'll be at... Not sure. Forever. What is it?
My usual assistant. Jobs for gold. Back so soon. I'm not an expert on... If you need gold, I... Work for hire! Hello. Would you happen to be looking for work? <laughs> 